convert from logarithmic form to exponential form. Because why wouldn't we? So first, logarithmic functions are inverses or inverse functions of exponential functions. That mean one undoes the other, right? We can kind of manipulate so that they kind of undo each other and we can rewrite one as the other. You have, this is so fun. This is so fun. So to do that, we use our definition of logarithm. Why is my pen not working? Here we go. And it states that if b to the y equals x, then I kind of missed my first part there, then y equals the log of x base b. And I tried to use the right terminology there. b to the y power equals x, then y equals log of x base b. So one of the big things here to notice is that the base of the exponent is also the base of the logarithm. And remember that the base must be positive, must be greater than zero. And then this here we call the argument of a logarithm. And you'll notice that I always kind of look at it this way. In the logarithm, x, the argument, is on the same side of the equal sign as the base. In the exponential, y is on the same side of the equal sign as the base. So I keep it tracked like that, that whatever is on the same side of the base, when I move it to the equivalent form of the other type, right, exponential to logarithm or logarithm to exponential, they have to flip-flop, okay? So the argument is with the log in the logarithmic, and then the argument becomes by itself in the exponential. Uh, the argument also must be greater than zero. So the argument of a logarithm must be positive. All right, let's go ahead and show some examples here. So we're going to write the following logarithmic equations in exponential form. All right, so I always start with the base. So in letter A, the base of that logarithm is 4. So that's going to become the base of my exponent. So I like to say 4 to the second power equals the argument of 16. Now, I think it's easier to go from logarithmic to exponential because we know that 4 squared is in fact 16. That is a correct statement. If I had written this um, to be 4 to the 16th equals 2, we know that mathematically that's not correct. So that doesn't make sense. So it's important that we start with the base, make the base your same exponent, right? The base is the same in exponential and logarithmic form. So 4 squared is 16. Okay. Let's look at letter B. The log of 2, 16, base 6 equals 3. Okay, so the base of the logarithm is 6, so that becomes the base of my exponential. And then I say, all right, 6 to the third power. So remember, I go to the opposite side of the equal sign to get my exponent is 216. So you're making yourself kind of a circle. Um, so 6 to the third equals 216. In letter C, I have log of the square root of 5, base 5, equals 1 half. Base of the log becomes base of the exponent. Raise it to the one half power equals the square root of five. And five to the one half power is indeed square root of five. In letter D, base of three, raise it to the third power equals 27. If you are a visual learner, put these arrows down, right? Write it down and put the arrows down. Now, in letter E, you're going to notice that there is no base given here. If you have a logarithm, an L-O-G logarithm, and there's no base given, it is automatically a base of 10. We call that a common logarithm. So therefore, my base is 10, and 10 squared equals 100. And that is uh, converting from logarithmic form to exponential form.